Hey, how you doing? I have something fun to share today. And I've been wanting to make it for a while now, but just didn't have the time. And it's been so hot. But today it's going to be Filipino pecan tarts. So yummy. And I'm sure if you've had them before, you'd recognize them right away. And it's funny because I only make it like once or twice a year. So I always pull out this good old... <laughs> recipe that Hazel gave me about 30 years ago and um, I had to kind of just look at it and see what was going on here and everything looks pretty good. I just had to make a couple of adjustments and so with the adjustments it came out okay. So here is the final recipe 30 years ago. Thank you Hazel. But anyways, the crust is two cups of flour. So this is my two cups of all-purpose flour here, one half cup butter, so this is my butter stick here, and this is from Costco, it's a blue butter, sweet cream butter, I don't really use any other butter, this is my favorite butter, I'll show you the box later, one eight ounce cream cheese, and this was some um, Ralph's, our local store, and any cream cheese will do. I don't think it really changed the taste. So if you could get a BOGO, then definitely, but pr probably not low fat cream cheese. That will probably change the taste. So just regular cream cheese. So that's in one bowl. That is the crust of the pecan tarts. And the filling I have for my other bowl is three fourths cup brown sugar. So I got golden brown sugar. You can use um, dark brown sugar if you want. So, but right now I have golden brown sugar. It tastes the same. Okay, so no problem. Three-fourths cup white sugar. Here is my white sugar stock. Four eggs. Here is my four eggs. One tablespoon of butter. I have another butter here. I'm going to take one tablespoon of that. And one cup chopped pecans. I'm going to cut it in half. So, um, I have one cup, but I'm going to use one half cup one way and one half cup the other way okay so let's get started all right so let me wash my hands so this recipe is from the motherland for sure so hazel got that recipe from her aunt and um i have not seen it in any other household or brought to any parties unless I have gone to a Filipino party, but believe me, it's delicious. It doesn't have any weird ingredients in it. It's just the, the basic stuff that I told you. Um, I think I don't see it that often also because it does take some patience um, to make. And with this particular recipe, the serving makes about 24. So um, it's about 10, 45 right now. I started kind of um, gathering the ingredients around eight doesn't mean that it took two and a half hours to make it just takes patience and concentration okay so here we go two cups flour one two I'm just gonna pan the camera down there one half cup butter. Okay, then one eight ounce of cream cheese. So we are going to go ahead and mix that around. If you have a stand-up mixer for dough, you can definitely use it, but I don't. And um, this is a glass tray, so I also don't have, I have a stand-up hand mixer, but since this is a glass tray, I don't really want to use my stand-up mixer to mix this. 
So I'm just going to do it by hand. And you'll see it forming anyway. And yes, it's on the messy side, but um, what isn't? <laughs> And this is very aromatic. It smells um, smells so good. So it's coming along well. Those mixing together well, as you can see. And yes, it does seem like a lot of cream cheese. And that's what I put on my notes on my recipe that it seemed like a lot of cream cheese, but. Since my mother-in-law makes this all the time, I did my research and found out that yes, it does need that cream cheese. So I've made this before. So I just needed to kind of reacquaint myself with the actual recipe. The nice thing about videotaping this and not putting it in, on hyperlapse is that you get to see the transformation from dry to a dough ball. Okay, so just a few more squeezes. There you go. There is our ball of dough for our crust for our pecan tarts. Doesn't that look cool? <laughs> okay, put that aside. Now we have our bowl here for the filling. So for the filling, I'm going to go ahead and set, reset my oven to 350. For the filling, 3 fourths cup brown sugar. Okay. So 3 fourths cup brown sugar. Then three fourths cup white sugar. Okay, three fourths cup white sugar. Four eggs. Okay, I'm gonna break them in this first so that I don't get any shells in the mix. Four eggs. One tablespoon melted butter. pecans split in half. Okay, so I am going to, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing this. All right, so again, stand up mixer, 
This would be really nice, but I have a have glass bowl today so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I'll just do it by hand. And if you use dark brown sugar, the three-fourths cup brown sugar and use dark brown sugar, of course, this mix would be darker. All right. So just a little butter bits in there, but those will melt, and then I'm going to remix it. Okay, so now we get to do the fun part. We get to move on and roll the dough. So here is my giant pecan tart tray. It makes one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 56 tarts. So this serving, like I said, will not be making 56 tarts. It's gonna be making about 25 average. So we're just gonna use half of the tray, okay? All right, so I'm gonna spray generously here to this half of the tray we're going to use. Wow. So here we go. The fun part. So, the fun part is you get to roll the dough. So you roll the dough and put it in the tray. So roll the dough, put it in the tray, put it in the tray, So the reason for this, and you'll see, because we're going to get a nice shell. Okay. So this is where organization, time and patience prevails. Because <laughs> you're rolling and rolling and rolling things. Okay. Okay, so I am going to just fill up this side and I can finish the other dough later. But I, want, I wanted to give you a look at what we're doing here. Okay, so this tool right here I got it a long time ago. So I'm not quite sure if you can get a tool like this, but I'm sure you can. You just have to look hard for it. So this is a magic tool. Okay, it's wood, has a flat bottom. So what this does, it, um, it flattens the crust for me and also makes the, di the divot in the crust so that you can pour in the filling, okay? So, first one I'm going to do, I'm going to make all these flat. Make all of these flat. So you saw that I poured out some flour and put it on a separate plate here because this dough, because of the cream cheese and the butter, can be super, super sticky. But this, having this flour and dipping this little wand in it really, really helps. Okay, so here we go. You see the first one that I'm going to do in the corner here. What I'm going to do is put pressure on it and then make a little indentation so it becomes like a little tiny bowl. So you see what that did? All right, so I'm gonna keep doing it. it. Takes a lot of patience for this. You see how that got sticky? So I have to go ahead and dip it in. Okay. And I'm just gonna do it to all of them. Let's 
So you're kind of getting the idea of what I'm doing here to make this indentation so that these mini pecan tarts will work. And each of these is going to have its own kind of look. We can't get, it's so hard to get uniform pecan tarts are, are, that are all identical because like I could tell, like this one is going to be a little bit taller. This one I did just right now is going to be a little bit taller and then this one might be okay, like average size. This one average size, so it's working out. So definitely dipping the wand into the, after every indentation into the flower here is really, really helped. So there you go. So you saw how I did that. Okay, and it just takes a little bit of practice. Okay, so. The, this is where, a little bit of concentration, this is where you put it in the oven at 350 for 10 minutes, okay? So that way it can kind of harden the shell a little bit to receive the filling. So I really don't want to put the filling right now in this really soft shell because it has all that cream cheese. I would like to harden it a little bit by cooking it for 10 minutes. So the nice thing about this individual cooking show at home is I can do whatever I want, what I need to make the video work. So I actually have a sample of one that has already cooked for 10 minutes. Yay, let's make it easy for us. So this has cooked for 10 minutes already. So I'm gonna pan it down. You see how the edges are a little bit hard right here? edges are a little bit hard okay so 10 minutes okay and I set my timer because if you walk away you don't want them to overcook before you put the filling so now this is where it kind of gets a little bit creative now we're gonna go ahead back in and reshape the crust without breaking the crust okay so I kind of be gentle with it but firm so I don't break the crust okay and each crust is different so my daughter she was the one who rolled this and put in the crust so hers um, look pretty good okay so I'm just reshaping the crust after 10 minutes of baking on a preheated oven at 350. Okay, so it's working out well. I managed to reshape the cooked crust without breaking any of them. So that is a plus plus for me. So the next thing we're gonna do is now we are going to fill the crust after it has been cooked for 10 minutes. So here is my filling. Okay. And this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to put all the pecans in, the one cup, into the filling. Okay, I'm gonna mix it around. Okay, and this is how I want them separated. So I'm gonna use one half, about one half cup of the pecans. I'm gonna take them out of the filling, okay? But I really, really wanted all the pecans to be pretty much glazed, 
with this filling, the sugar filling. So I'm gonna go ahead and take at least one half cup of the nuts out. And that's why in the recipe I asked for them to be separated by one half cup. And you'll see why. Okay. So the next fun step is I have my one tablespoon scoop right here. So now I get to fill them. So I'm going to take my one tablespoon and start filling. And so if one tablespoon is too much, then it's okay. But we have a decent kind of tool to kind of pour in the filling. pretty good. And some lucky friends are going to get to taste this today. And these, this kind of dessert is very hard to keep on the table for a, a long time because everybody just loves to grab one. So Notice that with this serving of filling, I have some left over. Not a lot, but the ratio of the filling to the crust is good, meaning that I won't have a lot left over, but I don't really um, think that I should be changing the ratio because then it might be off a little bit. So this is the really important part. Remember, I took half of the pecans out. This is where I put these candied marinated pecans, is what I'm gonna call them. And I'm gonna put them right on top of, right on top, so they get baked right on top because it makes it so much um, tastier when you have pecan shells sticking out right on top of the tart and it actually visually looks so much yummier too. So that's where I'm going to take a few that don't have much on top and just adorn it here with most of these. And I love nuts and stuff because it just has so much antioxidants and protein and they have the good fats I know I know we're putting it in sugar but any which way yeah <laughs> okay so here you go here are the pecan tarts ready to cook So this is where it gets a little bit tricky too. So each oven is different. So in my oven, in the previous pecan tarts I've made, I put it at 350 and I watched the tarts probably about every 15 minutes, but it took 40 minutes to get the lightness that I needed it to. So I will see you back in about 40 minutes with, with the finished product. All right, see you soon. One more look. Doesn't that look pretty? Let me do a close up. There you go. Oh. 
Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, I'm really going this time. I'll see you in 40 minutes. So I'm finally done, yay. It took about a total of three hours um, to repeat the recipe about three times. So um, it definitely yielded some delicious results, but um, that was about 75 pieces or so. I don't have 75 to show you because I already gave some away and people keep walking by and grabbing one. So I probably have about 50 pieces to show you. So I'm glad that I was able to review the recipe, do the recipe, and now I can show you the end result. I only make this like once a year, so I really, really wanted to capture it so I could spread the love in making these pecan tarts. All right, so let's get to the finished product. So here we go. Don't those look delicious? Oh my gosh. So my daughter helped me today because she watched her grandmother make this all her life since she was a child. So um, she kind of knew what to do and she did a great job. So let me kind of just show you some individual ones. All right. So this is one that my daughter made. I could tell because it's a little bit shorter on the sides. So I noticed with her batch, since she rolled the balls a little bit smaller and the balls were a little bit um, smaller, that made them shorter in the pan. So I noticed that it only cooked, it took 30 minutes to cook in the final phase after pouring in the filling. So let me see. Okay, so I could tell this is mine. So this one has a nice big chunk a pecan on the top and the edges are very firm the bottom is very firm so this pecan tart it has cream cheese in it yes um, but it's more like it tastes like a shortbread a shortbread crust so don't be surprised that it's really crunchy but then it's soft on the inside with the filling okay so here is another one with a nice baked in almost whole pecan. All right. So here is another one that's a little bit lighter on the bottom and the sides, but it's okay, it's cooked. These things, all of these combined, they either had a 30 minute final cooking phase or a 40 minute final cooking phase, okay? Let's see what we have here. Here is mine. I could tell because I overfill the filling and it, what it does, if you overfill it, it kind of seeps on the sides, but it's okay because it kind of gives it a characteristic of like a, I guess, let's see, like a glazed bottom. So you see how there's a dark ring around the bottom. So that's just like brown sugar that fell over on the sides and just kind of accumulated at the bottom. So here is another one that I know my daughter made because of the height. So she did a good job. So here is the bottom and then the top have like four pieces of chopped pecans on the top there. And then, um, it's funny how I could tell who made what. I know I made this one because I did it again where I, I love to overfill my stuff. I love the top to be looking thick um, with pecans and stuff, but because of that, some of the, some of the filling over, like kind of slips over the side. So this I know is mine because the filling kind of seeped over the side and kind of glazed the bottom. So you get the gist that the recipe worked out the way it was supposed to. And here is my tower of pecan tarts. You could just keep towering up, towering up. <laughs> get some lucky friends who get to eat this today. They just have to uh, kind of let me know that they want it. <laughs> All right. So 
here we go. I'm just kind of ooh, it's t toppling over. <laughs> okay, well you get the gist, you get the visual of what they should look like, and you got my recipe. So let me know um, how it goes for you and um, how they tasted for you. And uh, have a great rest of the day. Take care.